After scandals rocked religious TV in the 1980s, the Trinity Foundation provided testimony to congressional hearings in 1987. By the 1990s, Trinity had become the leading watchdog of religious media, conducting investigations and providing information used to expose fraud and abuses committed in the name of God. I'm rich. I am a wealthy man. Look at this. The blessing of Abraham is mine. I am the seed of an extremely rich God. Dollars a month. What do you need? Here it is. I'm telling you, there's a new order coming, and part of that order is you're going to be blessed coming in, blessed going out. Here's Lisa Guerrero and the I Squad with a look at some who've been preaching prosperity who are living large. They urge the faithful followers to donate generously, and in return, the Lord will bring them prosperity. I'm not going to be going to heaven and be broke when I get there. And there's no denying some people have prospered handsomely. Wow! The now pastors themselves, the they live like rock stars with huge mansions, private jets, and fancy cars. Their lifestyles are so lavish, six of them have been investigated by the U.S. Senate. It's not just one plane. We found a fleet of planes registered to the church. And you won't catch him waiting in line at the airport because he's got his own, the Kenneth Copeland Airport, located right next to his mansion. I think Copeland is unbelievably greedy. Ole Anthony heads the Trinity Foundation, a religious watchdog group that worked closely with the Senate committee investigating Copeland and other TV preachers. Televangelism alone is at least a two and a half to three billion dollar industry, untaxed, unregulated. That's right. By law, religious groups like Copeland's are exempt from federal taxes and they don't have to report how they spend their money to anyone. Amen. I absolutely refuse to eat in a poor boy restaurant. More recently, Deborah Bortner, former president of the North American Securities Administrators Association, stated, I've been a securities regulator for more than 20 years, and I've seen more money stolen in the name of God than in any other way. And now I'm flying the fastest civilian airplane in the world. And they're having no problem filling up the tank. <laughs> Former IRS Commissioner Mark Everson, in a letter to the U.S. Senate Finance Committee, admitted that even the IRS is unable to properly confront the problem. Speaking about a variety of organizations that do not have to file annual returns, such as churches and televangelists, Everson said, the problem is compounded because we have little ability to monitor their operations against diversions of assets. From ABC News, this is Prime Time. I'll tell you something, the heart of the devil kicks at me, the heart I'm going to kick back at him. God can get glory out of it. I understand that pain. Tonight, an undercover investigation of televangelists. Three preachers who manipulate followers into giving millions of dollars every year. Tonight, we take hidden cameras into Tilton's ministry, from the marketing company he uses to his luxurious homes. You'll see how the businessman deposits followers' money directly into the bank, but has a shocking place for their prayers and dreams. For decades, he has touched their hearts with his televised appeals for food and clothes for the orphans of Haiti. So you get no money from Reverend Grant? He doesn't come here? No. He does nothing for your children. No, no. But you're really saying Reverend Grant is a fraud. Do we? We? Yes. This is Robert Tilton. He has the fastest growing ministry on television today. You foul, rotten, stinking devil. I'm going to beat you up, you devil. I'm going to cut you to pieces in the name of Jesus. We asked him to show us how to start a big money ministry like Tilton's. Give him something free. You know, we ought to mail you the latest copy of X and get the name and address. No. First of all, when you send an item in it, it gets their attention. That's number one. Tilton sends out an avalanche of things he asks viewers to send back to him. Miracle prayer claws he promises to touch and place upon an altar. Arrows he'll use to take aim at a sufferer's needs. A tracing. Place your hand there and he'll put his hand there too. We found them in the garbage at the bank and the marketing research center. The arrows. This person wanted his aimed at getting a real dad. The tracing, where Tilton said he'd place his hand, ripped up by the bank. 
we found heartbreaking appeals from followers and letters like this one. It came with personal photographs for Pastor Bob and a prayerful message. It also came with a $7,000 pledge. The money probably made it to Tilton. The prayers went in the trash. The belonging of a man's heart is for community, for a sense of, of being able to lay down his life for something important. That can't happen with a television tube. Why do people send it? Because why? The same reason people go to Las Vegas. It's a heavenly lottery. But they'll have people who come forward and say, I got a miracle. Did you ever see the Wizard of Oz? They all were on this trek to find the wizard. But whom do you blame, the well, wizard or them? It's, but the point is, you don't blame either one. What happens, it's part of the process. Dorothy got her heart's desire. The Tin Man received his heart's desire. The Lion received his heart's desire. And the Straw Man received his heart's desire, even though the wizard was a charlatan. Why? His legs have just been healed. Would you go? Uh, lower back is being healed, thank you, Lord. To be healed, successful televangelist Benny Hinn claims he can call on God to heal the sick. We took a closer look through a hidden camera. Does he practice what he preaches? He's in the business of raising money and spreading his own celebrity. A mesmerizing faith healer with millions of believers. The Lord is asking me now to ask him to give you a new lung. <laughs> Millions in donations. It's just a money machine. On the program today, you are going to see a clip of this man who rose from the dead. Miracles or frenzied theater? And the questions about the millions of dollars gathered from his faithful. Most of, uh, for one evening, I believe the most that I am aware of was like $780,000. And the last name there is Joshua, but that's the name that Benny Hinn checks in under, David Joshua. Right. Hinn's room at the Savoia, 1001, is the presidential suite. It is the largest hotel suite in Europe and features its own Baroque swimming pool and Turkish bath. The going rate, more than 10,000 US dollars per night. It's time to begin telling the truth. Come, give me a close shot, will you? And look at these eyes. I have never lied to you, never, I never will, I'd rather die than lie to God's people. And it's very difficult to prove um, these different charges in a religious matter because rightly so, the First Amendment protects a lot of things, but I don't think the First Amendment ever protected fraud. I'm Katie Couric, also tonight the Bible advises don't store up treasures on earth. Ought to shout amen. But look at this. Just some of a TV preacher's treasures paid for with tax-exempt donations. That's why Senate investigators are digging into whether ministry resources are being diverted into an array of for-profit companies. The nonprofit activity and the for-profit activity are so intertwined that you can't you can't separate them. We'll never ever be used for anything other than what is becoming to you, Lord Jesus. But that's not what happened. CBS News has learned he used this ministry jet and another to fly to and from Colorado three times in 2007, the site of frequent Copeland family vacation. We answered them. <laughs> we gave them a several page lesson on no. Anthony heads the Trinity Foundation, a Dallas-based nonprofit that's worked with the FBI, IRS, even the U.S. Senate to report church corruption. Believe it or not, we're the only group in America that routinely investigates religious fraud. Show the cost at $3 million. The owner of the house, not Duplantis, but his ministry, Jesse Duplantis Ministries. Donors expect the money to be used for poor and needy not for, for build, huge uh, mansions for the pastor. Unfortunately, this is becoming more and more common, where the preachers are using, at best, suspicious business dealings to hurt the church and benefit themselves. Go out there behind the building, behind where my office is in, you see a Bentley out there, $300,000 car. I got the pink slip on that, baby. God's people will always have enough money if when they're hit by the devil, 
they sow the biggest seed they can. There is faith right now for a new car. If you'll seed today for that new car, the loan will go through. You will get that car. See this beautiful sterling silver cross with a stone from Mount Calvary. While in Jerusalem, Paul mined some large stones that had fallen from this historic mountain to the pavement below. You need to make a $5,000 value. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Second Peter 2, 2.